winning the party in two three months as early as she got my job the key. Well, we have a really diverse crowd here at Town Hall and not a lot of people were really committed to voting and so I decided to start bribing them with free beers for their vote. Just trying to get people involved for the last few weeks, create some sort of conversation about politics here. We watch all the debates. I force people to watch all the debates, I guess. <laughs> and so I got the owner to agree to give me a free beer for everyone who voted today and it was a good way to bring everyone out. Yeah, how do you like the turnout so far? I feel positive. I feel like most people are here for Barack Obama, which would be my preference, but there's <laughs> enough people here to strike up conversation on the other side, not on the Republican side, just on <laughs> the other side of Democrats. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what drew you to Obama uh, personally? What's that? What drew you to Obama personally? I just really think that not to overuse the word change, but I just really think that I would like someone who had a different point of view that is not part of this old school political system that is basically hardly a democracy anymore, doing Bush Clinton, mm -hmm. Bush Clinton. I don't know, I think that we're going to appear a lot more democratic if we get a new face in the House that is ready to make some big changes and have an actual plan of how to get us out of Iraq instead of a sort of plan. Do you know, I honestly, for Super Bowl, had four people in here for the entire night, and I've got about, what, 50, 60 people in there now for yeah. this? And I feel a hell of a lot better about 60 people for Super Tuesday than three people for the Super Bowl. I wanted to come to a party and uh, voted for Barack Obama, and I want to watch the results with the other people I know who are Obama supporters. Yeah, same thing. I uh, done some volunteering for Barack Obama, so just checked and seen where everybody was going, and this is the place. I mean, it, to, I mean, to be honest, of, of all the things, of all the positions, really, I guess two things. One was the, the original positions on the war. I think it showed a lot of foresight. But two, I really do think there's sort of a generational switch. I think that's what this campaign's about. I think that, you know, and, and the, a lot of the different um, uh, journalists and, and editorials now have been coming out with this sort of generational theme. But, you know, if we have another McCain-Clinton campaign, it's going to be the same thing that we heard 40, 60 years ago. I mean, the same arguments again and again, the same division, the same jump. And, you know, frankly, I'm tired of it. I think we can get beyond it, and I think he actually provides us that opportunity. Well, I mean, I've worked on campaigns since my, like, early 20s. Um, I got to meet Barack during the Senate uh, primaries when I was working at a radio station. And, I mean, I've met a lot of a lot of people. I worked for everything from Nader to Democrats back in Virginia to others. And, uh, I mean, I just never met a guy that seemed bright, sincere, like, generally interested in someone like myself who used to be a little bit more long hair and, you know, obnoxious on like these days. Um, so, I mean, from the start, I just, I had a, a familiarity with him and, and kind of his talents and his um, nature and, like... I'm not, I'm actually undecided right now. I'm, I'm still undecided. I'm, I didn't vote today. I'm registered in Pennsylvania because I think it's more important in the in the real election to vote in Pennsylvania than in Illinois. I am for both Clinton and Obama at this point. Um, I don't want to say like my Illinois vote doesn't matter, but I think they'd both be great. So as long as we don't have McCain in office. Why would you want McCain in office? McCain spoke at our graduation, and he like spent the entire time legitimizing the war in Iraq. And I was like, even if you feel that way, don't waste my time talking about it. You know. I actually I took voted. my I took my mother to vote. Uh, my vote. My mother has been a citizen of the United States for 16 years and has never, ever, ever exercised her right to vote. I know. So today I thought she really needed to. She voted for Obama, and I heard her say to herself, she muttered to herself, well, Obama should win because I had never voted in 16 years and I voted for Obama, so he better win. So, I, I really hope so. Well done, well done, yeah. well done. And, uh, what were you 
you support? Uh, I'm definitely uh, an Obama, Obama fan, basically. And basically, it's because I, I may not look it, but I am an old geezer, an older geezer who actually sort of was born when Kennedy was out there still. So it, I'm, I actually, I feel the connection. It's all part of it. My dad, the only Democrat my dad ever voted for was Kennedy. We wonder why. Not because he was Catholic. It was because of what he was all about. When Obama starts talking, it's like, oh my God, it was like the shivers. It's like little hairs growing on my arms going, it's like some, there's something here. There's something here. Like, I'm supporting Obama and that's a recent decision. I was teetering between Hillary and Obama. What put you over the edge? Bill Clinton <laughs> in South Carolina. Uh, what he did there, I go with what the pundits say, scares me of having him roam in the White House and what he would do out of control. The other was something Hillary said uh, in trying to fight Obama, a little comment on NPR I heard where um, she was, uh, I agree with Obama to take the cap off the Social Security and Hillary was arguing against that and her uh, argument was so weak I knew that it wasn't authentic. This morning I voted for Obama. I actually met Obama across the street at Sidetrack. Like three years ago, it was he was nobody. He well, he was nobody. He was Barack fucking Obama, but he was uh, nobody to a lot of people in the city of Chicago. And he was just walking around pressing the flesh. And uh, he came into Sidetrack one Sunday afternoon and was shaking hands. So that was my first encounter with him. And I wish I could have that moment back because I'm from Kansas and his mom is from Wichita. And he was so unfamous at the time that I probably could have talked to him for 15 minutes about Kansas because that's how a unfamous he was and b how little he had to say to anyone sidetrack because he was just walking and shaking hands and nobody knew who he was. Well done. Well done. Correct, because uh, I'm from Connecticut, and I know there are a bunch of peaceful, reasonable people that make the right decision, and that's why they voted for Obama. When New Jersey and Massachusetts voted for Clinton, Connecticut was reasonable and logical, and they voted for Obama. All right, and uh, who, I assume you're an Obama supporter? Yes, I am an Obama supporter. Uh, why are you supporting Obama? Uh, because he's he's not Hillary Clinton, and I think he's he's fresh enough that he hasn't been tainted by uh, a number of special interest groups and people tugging at his at his shirt coat, you know, to do certain things. I think a, a little bit of him still is old school, late 60s, early 70s hope, and you know the people uniting and gathering and doing that type of stuff, which has been you know lost in this country for a number of years. Of course, covering Obama. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, what, are, what, what do you guys know about Obama in Japan? Like, what's the perception of him? We call him like you know, as um, American media say, it's a kind of coming again of the how, how can I say, coming back of the Kennedy, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we're kind of um, interested in how this, how this, pe how his speech, mm -hmm. and how what is, uh, how he, his idea is, is very you know interested in. And uh, what led you to this bar in particular to see the speech? Hmm? What led you to this bar in particular? What was, uh, what was your lead? Uh, how did you hear about what was going on here for Super Tuesday coverage? Uh, <laughs> Difficult questions. Uh, many things, I think. Especially uh, Iraqi issues and uh, health care. We do care also. It's a, we have the same problem in Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, also Iraqi problem. I like his idea that um, ne never fear to negotiate. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, I like that mind, yeah. Oh no, I, why did you come to this bar? This bar? Yeah. To cover what kind of people are supporting well, Mr. Obama. Well, but, uh, but how'd you find out like that there'd be people here watching and just asking? They were on the homepage of uh, Mr. Obama. kind of surprised about a lot of it, but I shouldn't be. It's just Hillary's been around for so long, you just 
expect her to do well, but even with all the hype and build up on Obama, it's just really great to see him taking a lot of these little and Midwestern states. But I still have to say I'm not completely decided, but I'm leaning towards Obama, but I don't know. The results are way beyond what I thought was going to happen. I was expecting two states winning and everything else coming close. We've done, there's a list, way beyond what's going on. I'm like, I'm blown away. You know, if it's close now, it's plenty really of time for him to turn. He certainly has no problem raising money. I've given him tens of dollars. <laughs> so, I had to save some for $2 drinks. So, well, I mean, it's not like he wasn't, he's not hurting for money just now. Yeah. No. <laughs> what was it? How many million? 32. 32 million. That's got to be a right. I had a similar month of January, actually. Was, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was That's a good That's why we're taking the points. And the real big question is, what is the delegate count? That's going to be the big question in my mind. And that's why I say it's going to go back to a brokered convention, I think. Oh, his speech, he's fantastic. I mean, I have a communications background, and I was just telling a friend, God, I wish I could be a speechwriter like that. He's fantastic. And my friend just told me that he has a 27-year-old writing his speeches. Yeah. I mean, he's very involved in them himself, but not only does he write them, but he delivers them well. He's, he's fantastic. It is one thing, and you know I love you back. February night that we do not need the final results to know. Our time has come. <laughs> then we're doing it. They know that we can take our politics to a higher level. But they're afraid. They've been taught to be cynical. They're doubtful that it can be done. But I'm here to say tonight to all of you who still harbor those doubts, we need you. We need you to stand with us. We need you to work with us. We need you to help us prove that together, ordinary people can still do ordinary, extraordinary things in the United States of America. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire. So gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled.